What's up, Packer fans? It is game day. I'm so excited. I hope you guys are excited. Packers have to win today. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not. But the Packers need to win this game today. I'm calling it a must win on the road in D.C. against Washington. We're going up against the backup quarterback, Taylor Tyler Heineke, a guy who rushed for 95 yards against the Packers last year. A guy who gives the Packers fits with his mobility and his ability to, you know, make every every throw. The defense needs to be sound today, but everything starts on offense with the offense aligned for the Packers going up against this Washington front four. If they had Chase Young, who's out with an ACL, they'd have four first rounders on that D-line. Montez Sweat, Darren Payne, and Jonathan Allen are the three others. This defensive front, they're fourth in the league in sacks and first in the league in QB hits. Packers need to protect Rodgers. It's going to be a long day on both sides of the ball, or um, off passing and running, if the Packers can't block it up front. Um, they were going to do something. David Bakhtiari hit the injury report yesterday. Kind of... Uh, you know, surprise there because he was practicing all week. He practiced three days this week, which also was a surprise. I hope that wasn't what kind of led to this new injury. But the Packers were going to shuffle the offensive line. They really wanted to leave David Bakhtiari at left tackle, obviously. Move Elkin Jenkins over to left guard, I think they were going to do. Have Yash at right tackle. And then throw, you know, Josh Meyer still at center. And then have that right guard spot go to John Runyon Jr., I think. Now with David Bakhtiari's injury, they're going to have to move Yash to left tackle. That's going to, you know, kind of mess things up with where they're putting Jenkins. Uh, J John Runyon Jr., I thought he was better suited at left guard. Maybe put Jenkins at right guard. But if they want to put Jenkins at left guard and have John Runyon Jr. at right guard, we will see what the Packers do. But no matter what they do, they need to get this offensive line figured out. They need to be able to block up front. Really, really was tough sledding last week, running the ball. 20 carries, 60 yards. And I mentioned this before. When Aaron Jones has 15 or more carries, the Packers are 20 and all. I don't know what else you need, what other information you need besides that to get Aaron Jones the football more. They need to do that today. They need to be able to block up front and run the ball. But using the run to set up the pass, that's ideal. And if the Packers can't run the ball because they can't block, then they're not going to be able to throw the ball because they can't set it up and they can't block it up. So... Really a tough situation. Obviously, that defensive front four, front seven for Washington, you know, they make plays. They get after it. Cole Holcomb, the middle linebacker, is a really good linebacker, sideline to sideline, really a good tackler, doesn't miss a lot of tackles. So the Packers have their work cut out for them on offense. They do get Sammy Watkins back, which I think is huge. He got hurt after week two. After that Bears game when he had that 93, I think 93-yard performance, that 55-yard catch. And so that was the first week Alan Lazard was back. And so Lazard was still hobbled by the ankle. He did score a touchdown in that game, but he only had a few catches, I think. He's, since then, Lazard has you know increased his performance. Randall Cobb had a good game. He is out on IR. Cobb is on IR. And so having Watkins and Lazard both back as wide receiver one, two, have Dobbs in the slot or the, as wide receiver three, that would be really, really exciting to see. Um, I think Watkins with his just big playability and some, you know, his route running and his speed, he can be really dynamic. And then Lazard is just a really good possession receiver, can go up and make the plays. I think having both of those guys healthy on the outside changes this offense up a little bit. Obviously, we need a block up front, but we haven't had both of those guys fully healthy this season. And then adding, you know, the rookies are starting to come along a little bit. We know that Christian Watson is out for this game as well. And so, you know, injuries not really plaguing the Packers too bad this season. But when it comes down to, you know, Bakhtiari's shuffliness and not being able to figure out if he's going to be good to go. And then these rookie, the rookie receiver Watson being injured on and off, really kind of, you know, lagging his development on where he wants to be this season or at the end of the season or even midseason. So Packers definitely need to figure out something on offense. They need to start scoring more points, obviously. This is an offensive league. It's a, pa a quarterback-driven league. We have, you know, the two-time back-to-back MVP, four-time total MVP, and the Packers can't move the ball throwing it. They can't, you know, they don't get big plays anymore. The longest pass last week was the 35-yarder for a touchdown to Lazard. Just And then the Packers' defense haven't been able to get off the field, haven't been able to make stops at all. 
well, you know, they played half a game last week. They were <laughs> first half was good, you know, it looked promising, and then really a bad second half, kind of like against the Giants. So Packers defense, they're gonna have to play a full game of football. The defense, though, they have such an advantage over this Washington offense. This Washington offense is not very good. They do have that three-headed monster at running back with J.D. McKissick, kind of the third down receiving back. Antonio Gibson, kind of that big power back. And then um, Brian Robinson, the young up-and-coming rookie who's really, really good. He'll probably get the starter, the bulk of the carries. But, you know, all those guys can catch out of the backfield. All those guys can run. So it's going to be up to the Packers defense to stop them. And then they have, you know, Curtis Samuel on the outside and Terry McLaren, who is really good. I think ja, um, Jair Alexander is going to be chasing him around the field all day today. But I hope that this Packers defense can get after it up front. You know, the commander's offensive line isn't great. Their tight end is, is decent, Logan Thomas. But if the Packers can get after Heineke, and it's Heineke's first start of 2022 he did start all of, but like one or two games last year I think he did play the Packers and so the the Packers know him he knows the Packers but he's a guy that coming in to his first start I think the Packers can show him some stuff that they didn't show on tape maybe trick him into something maybe fool him into something I think today is the day the Packers defense gets after it Turn, force some turnovers. We only have one interception in the first six games. That was Jair Alexander week two. Washington has two interceptions on the season, so they're not much better than we are on defense when it comes to that. They force their pressures up front. They get sacks. They have five guys with three or more sacks. That is crazy to think about. Packers have, you know, I think uh, Preston Smith and Rashawn Gary both have more than three, but otherwise... Packers need to get more pressure up front. The pressure leads to forced throws or hurried throws, which can lead to turnovers on the back end. So they really got to start working in harmony with each other. But this Packers defense needs to get after it. I'm thinking Rashawn Gary gets another sack today. He'll have seven and seven games. Hopefully he can get after it more. But the Packers need to force some turnovers. They've lost the turnover battle in every single game this season. And that is not a formula for winning. It's surprising that they're win winning those games even when they do lose the turnover battle. What would happen if they would start winning this turnover battle? I think this Packers team could be a lot better. I think as these young guys start developing a little bit more, they have more time under their belt, the offense will start kind of picking it up and then getting these guys healthy. Hopefully Bakhtiari's health can, can get full go soon. I, maybe they should you know back him down and let it kind of go or reheal itself, but if it's something that's going to be a lingering issue forever now for him, that's really a bummer for Bakhtiari, and that's kind of a career for him then if this is going to be an ongoing issue. Hopefully he can get through this season and then heal up over the offseason and be good to go for next year, but that's something to watch closely. And so I was excited about having David Bakhtiari at left tackle, having John Runyon Jr. at left guard, or Jenkins at left guard, and then Myers at center. And then you put, you know, Jenkins or John Runyon Jr. at right guard, whatever way, whatever guard spot they feel better at, Jenkins and Runyon Jr. And then have Yash at right tackle. I really thought Yash could do it at right tackle. If he has the quick enough feed, he's 6'8 to play left tackle. If he can do left tackle, he can play right tackle. Obviously, it's a little bit different, but left side is a lot more, you know, you're the blind side of Rodgers. You need to make sure he's protected, and he, he did a good enough job. So I think... Being on the front side of Rodgers, I think that'll help him. And I think that'll allow, you know, he's a big guy. I think he can really do that position. So this injury does set back some of those plans for the offensive line. But I do think that's something to come. And I'm excited because Zach Tom and Sean Ryan are the backups right now for the guard positions. And I think, you know, Ryan is 6'4", 320. He was inactive every game this season so far. But he was the number one graded run blocking guard in the FBS last year out of UCLA. And then Zach Tom, you know, he played left tackle, center. He wanted to be a starter at all five positions. He's really a solid player. Rodgers called him a tweener, just a little undersized. So maybe, you know, he'll develop into that body. But I think these guys, both of them, you know, maybe there's, I don't know why Sean Ryan was inactive for all those games, but you know, hopefully he can get going. And that's a guy that I think you could plug in and play right away. I really thought he'd be a plug and play right away type of guy for this team. Um, obviously his developments come a little slow. I don't know what the issues were, but I think with both of those guys, the Packers do have a promising future at guard. They just need these guys to kind of get some time to develop here. 
and hopefully this Packers offensive line can you know, hold strong until the reinforcements come, until they can figure out what's going on. I mean, that first running play last week against Quinton Williams up the middle, Aaron Jones lost five yards. And right after that, I was like, well, this game, this is tough. <laughs> this is going to be a long day. And then like the next play, Rodgers threw the one that got bounced off of Tanyan's hands, but it was the ground and they got pick six, but it was, you know, incomplete. But it just, that was just the vibe of the game early on. And you could just tell that that, that was how this game was going to go. And it was slow early on, but the Packers offense couldn't do anything with the ball. The defense made stop after stop after stop after stop. And the Packers offense couldn't do anything. So Hopefully they can turn that around. This is a big game today. I'm calling it a must win. Why am I calling it a must win? Because they have at Buffalo next, in Buffalo, on Sunday Night Football, prime time, Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs, that Buffalo defense. With the Packers, how they're playing right now, I'm calling that a loss. I hate to be pessimistic ever about the Packers, but that team, you just got to be real about it. They're probably going to lose in Buffalo. Then they have at Detroit. At Detroit, that's a winnable game. Detroit's been up and down, up and down. Best offense, worst defense. You know, 40 points a game and then getting shut out against the Patriots. So who knows what Detroit team you get. But with uh, Swift hurt and, you know, the issue, you know Jared Goff, he's not great. But their offense looks high power. Their defense is horrible. So that's a winnable game for the Packers. And then they have the Cowboys coming to town, to Lambeau, on November 13th. Cowboys team looking really good. That's Mike McCarthy's visit back to Lambeau, to the Packers. And Cowboys, you know, with Dak and with that defense, they're going to be a tough matchup. Not calling that a for sure loss. It's just going to be a tough matchup. And then we have the Titans after that. So the next four games, I see us going about 2-2 two and two after today. And, you know, maybe 3-1 and one if we can score that Dallas game and beat the Titans. But 2-2, two and two, probably more realistic. And so winning this game today puts us at four and three, and then the two and two looks not so bad. We'll still be six and five, but it's way better than five and six after this little four game stretch here. So I'm really calling this a must win. The Packers need to come out, set the tone early. I don't know, maybe take a deep shot, try to hit Sammy Watkins deep right away, or just, you know, really maintain the ball, run the clock, run the football, run the football, run the football. A.J. Dillon needs to get going. He hasn't had a great season this year. He, him and Jones were talking about being 2,000-yard backs, and that means they have to average 59 yards per game total, and I don't think either of them had that last week, which they <laughs> that's a number that, with the amount of games there are now, it's a number that should be reachable, especially for a guy like Aaron Jones. And I just They need to get these guys the football. He had three carries, zero yards in the first half against the Jets. That is not going to cut it. And the Packers, just a lot of throws when they don't need to. They did it against the Giants. A lot of passing, 39 throws when they had the lead or tied up until the six-minute mark of the fourth quarter. A lot of things the Packers need to work out. Hopefully, like I said, this defense can be more sound. I think that the aggressiveness of the secondary – how Jair was playing last week, how Douglas was playing last week, I think that's really going to escalate them into the the uh, interception and turnover force column finally. It looks like Jair was close to three picks last week. He said he should have had all three. I think he's going to want to come out and get one this week for sure. I think the Packers are going to be really coming after it. They have a standard in Green Bay that they want to live up to. Nobody likes to lose. A lot of these guys haven't really experienced a lot of losing if they've been on the team the last one, two, or three years with, with Rodgers and LaFleur. So for a lot of these guys, this is new territory. They need to bounce back. They need the veterans to really step up. They need Rodgers just to play better. You just have to play better. You have to escalate your play and dra and bring everybody with you. That's what he has to do in order to take this team to the next level. And so far, they've just been so hit or miss and so flaky. Haven't played a complete game on either side of the ball. And that needs to start today. They need to bounce back. They need to get this win. And that's why it's a must win for the Packers today. Obviously, it's still a long season after this. They still have 10 games after this, which anything can happen. You could go 10-0. and 0. I get it. But we'll be realistic. If you start losing these games, now you lost three in a row then. Well, Florida's never lost even... Two in a row. Now he's lost two in a row, and this could be three in a row today. Obviously, you don't want to ever do that. But 
Packers, if they can bounce back today, get a win, that just helps the confidence. Maybe they, you know, force some turnovers. Maybe they make some big plays on offense. And just one big play can change everybody's, you know, mental. Just it'll change the thought process. It'll be like, okay, we can do this. We can make those plays. We can get it done. And that's what is so important. You know, these athletes, when they're pros, it's everybody's been telling you how great you are your whole life. And then when you start really doing bad, you start hearing all the flack. And it's just like, how do you bounce back from that? It's not what happens, it's how you react to what happens to make this team who it's going to be. So I'm excited to see how they show up. It's going to be a battle, no doubt, in the trenches, both sides of the ball. Our linebackers need to be great today. Walker and Campbell need to step up huge. Campbell has really dropped off a cliff. Nine tackles in six games. He had four tackles all of last year in 17 games. He needs to have a big game. And then the safeties, Darnell Savage, lowest graded PFF safety for a starter in the league. He's had his lowest graded year in his career. He needs to bounce back and have a big game. And then we just need the veterans to really just be sound. Kenny Clark, you know, Preston Smith, Adrian Amos. We need those guys to step up and really make plays when it matters for this team. I don't know. The Packers haven't been able to lean on a lot of you know, just the veteran presence, it doesn't seem. No one's really stepping up. Lazard's made some big plays against the Patriots. They kind of, you know, pushed us down the field that one on third and 10 when he caught that. But, you know, through the season, it's it's pretty easy to just pick like the one or two plays where you're like, okay, yeah, that was one good play, but it didn't really, you know, catapult them into any more success than that. So big game today. Super exciting. I love this. I hope you guys are excited. The Packers need to win this, but Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Check out other videos, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Go Pack Go!